Welcome back to Next Year Investing. It's time for under 30s. We take a look at Lucid, stock ticker LCID. Joining us now is George Tillis, senior markets correspondent for the Schwab Network. George, stock's been uh, struggling, but it has seemed to kind of try to base out, let's say, this year. Hasn't really been going a ton lower. Hasn't really gone anywhere to the upside either. It obviously chops around quite a bit day to day. But uh, what do we make of this? I mean, this is a company that's seemingly fallen so far behind even like a Rivian when it comes to the EVs. Well, obviously, the stock is down tremendously over the past few years. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, stocks can only go to zero. So, you know, the trend is still down for, for Lucid. Uh, I think it, you brought in a good competitor, Rivian. One of the things about Rivian is, is they're also facing some production challenges. They seem to not have the capacity to produce more, but at the same time, Rivian has a powertrain contract where they actually service and provide the powertrains that go to the Amazon delivery vans. So they have a commercial uh, production unit that is offsetting some of the weakness we're seeing in the consumer division. But nonetheless, Lucid is very consumer centric in terms of their products, uh, their electric vehicles are expected to uh, begin some pre-orders for their SUV coming up, but the, the company is just losing too much money. And that's why the stock is down over the last year, it's down, I believe, about 60%. But if you look at a three-year chart, it's down, down you know, over 80 or if not 90% because the company's um, losses just continue to mount. Now, if you look at even the report, um, they did come ahead of um, EPS. I'm sorry, revenue. They came in at $200 million. The estimate was around two, uh, sorry, $192 million. Uh, that was higher by about 32%. The number of deliveries actually was about 2,400 units. Production levels was 2,100 units. The deliveries number was over 70% year over year, but the delivery number was quite a bit higher than the production unit for the quarter, which gives you an idea that they've been building inventory, trying to offload that inventory. Now, uh, behind the scenes, if you look at the, um, the, the estimates, they did reduce the losses for the uh, fiscal year. Uh, prior to the yesterday's release of earnings, the estimates were a, a negative dollar eleven. Now it's down to a dollar four for this year. But next year, the losses are expected to continue to be lower, but nonetheless still uh, quite low at around eighty-seven cents. So basically, you're dealing with a company that uh, essentially is, um, you know, generating about eight hundred million dollars in revenue. But you just look at the last four quarters; they've lost about two point four billion dollars. So they just keep diluting shareholders and um, that's been a challenge for the business they just can't seem to increase their production levels sufficient to achieve any economies of scale now i know this because if you look at 2021's delivery numbers they actually beat the estimate but it was around 7200 units uh not sorry 2022 just let me correct myself there so they're expecting only 9,000 total units for 2024 so the total production levels have only increased by 2,000 units on a per annum basis in the last two years. So this is supposed to be a growth company that just doesn't generate sufficient amounts of revenue growth. Yeah, and George, I think that that's been like the problem, the, the epitome of the problem we've seen depicted for the last, I mean, like several quarters now. So I was seeing some enthusiasm tied to this Saudi Arabia investment. I mean, like one and a half billion dollars, which is yeah. basically like a reprieve for now. I mean, is this this so like cash that we're seeing thrown at this company that, that needs it to stay afloat? I mean, like, is this necessarily a win or more of like, I'd say like a safety net? Yeah, so they have cash. That's the thing about it. If you look at the market cap, uh, it's around seven billion. They have about four billion plus the additional infusion of the Saudi Arabian convertible preferred stock. They're basically uh, going to be giving them um, the offers, the offer to convert the stock into a tremendous amount of common equity. So it does provide more liquidity now. But the problem being is, is that, you know, anytime you have too much cash on your balance sheet with a low market capitalization, you have to look at the cash burn. And the cash burn is basically looking at last year's numbers. Uh, and if you annualize last quarter's revenue at 200 million, it's about 800 million. They lost essentially three times that amount. Um, so if that happens, the stock should go down. That's what's happening here. Now, the other thing you, you can say is, is, well, the short interest is going down. Yeah, that's true because is it really viable to short anymore if it's close to zero? So I think that's another thing you have to consider here. So right now, the other thing I'll say here lastly is, is if you consider the, the economic environment that we're in or moving into potentially, 
that also poses a challenge for loose. So they're going to be increasing production at a time when maybe they won't be able to sell the units at the prices that they have uh, that they have forecasted right now. Yeah, and I think well put, George, and a good way to look at Lucid now trading at, I mean, it's up 5.5%, but at $3.16 a share. And looking perhaps maybe like it could improve things as far as its balance sheet, but sky's the limit from here because obviously we're in a space where we need to see some improvement. So great insight as always, George Chill, Senior Markets Correspondent for the network, and that will also do it for us for Next Gen Investing for, of course, this Tuesday, closing things out still very much in the green, led by strength in the NASDAQ today up around 2.4% in real time.